thanks for listening. Um, and now I'm going to show you how to approach some of the difficulties in this piece. So I, I recorded the other etude, the Fiorillo 22, first. Um, and a lot of the same things apply to this piece. Um, so I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm repeating myself, but there are just so many similarities. You know, the, um, the sol G at the beginning, and then just a lot of passage work um, in high positions, that kind of thing. And so um, I'll probably be applying a lot of the same concepts. To start with, in case you didn't see it in the other video, um, one thing that really helps with um, high G string positions is this Wolf Eliminator. If you're having trouble getting a good sound high on the G string, I would recommend that. Um, uh, I'll put a link in the description. Um, they're, they're very cheap. And then the other thing you can try um, is experiment with different strings um, that could really change the clarity and sound quality you get in the high register. Um, I especially recommend for the G string, the Ida Parazzi kind of um, was a huge change when I tried it on my violin. I don't, I'm, I'm not using it right now, but it's a great string. So, um, but experiment what's best on your violin. To get into some specifics, um, and so in this opening um, Sol G section, the, there are some really difficult scales that go by very quickly. Um, and so, of course, practice with a metronome slowly so you can get the rhythms exact. Um, it looks intimidating maybe, but it's not that hard. You just have to know where all the 30 second notes um, go. Uh, but for the scales, to, to make them sound good, these really quick Sol G scales, focus on lifting up your fingers rather than placing down. So. Just focusing on that upward vertical motion and then coming down as well. And it's it just kind of flies by a lot easier if you're not worried about like heaviness like pressing down. And the reason is it's you know up here the the string is so high off the fingerboard, see? So um it, it there's just so much pressure you need to, to place it down. Um, you actually don't have to place this, the, your finger down all the way to get a good sound. So if you're focusing on the upward motion, it kind of minimizes the amount of effort you're putting in um, and it'll sound better. On this next line, um, when it finally goes to the D and A string, um, there are some tricky shifts here. Um, I recommend just using making sure you shift with a guide tone or auxiliary um, shift, however you want to call it, just um, shifting on the finger you were on previously to um, kind of guide you to the next. You need to be solidly in um, third position here because you want to get this G natural. It's, a, it's, it's hard to hear from the F sharp. It's a kind of a, a difficult interval to hear, so make sure you're, you're just solidly there um, so that G natural can return. Now, going on, and in the same passage, there's, there's a really hard measure where... And then you have this tenth, and this big shift. Um, so, like I said in the Fiorillo video, um, it will help you to think about this tenth um, extending backwards. Uh, when you practice. So setting the G first and then the E. Um, and then eventually it, you'll, you'll kind of know how that feels in your hand um, and you'll be able to, to get it going the, the correct way. So in the fast section, um, it's all about scales at least for a lot of it. Um, so I, there's, there's not a whole lot more to it. Um, you, you need to practice your scales, practice them slowly with a metronome. Um, just getting used to that motion in your fingers, it, it'll become second nature and these, these runs will be very easy. Um, for some specifics, um, don't be afraid to use 
a lot of bow on the 16th notes. Um, you you want to get a good sound in its forte. So try to feel like uh, just a constant motion in your arm. Um, you, you don't want to feel constricted at all. Um, when you get to the top of the scale, um, it'll help to think about um, kind of staying, try to stay on the lower side of the note if you can. It's really easy as you keep shifting up to get sharper, um, but the problem is, especially this first one um, that ends with a harmonic B, that harmonic cannot change. It's however you've tuned your strings, it's right there and it's not gonna change. So if you get too sharp, See, it, it, it kind of sounds weird to end like that. So it's it's a little better um, if you're on the lower side um, approaching that B. In my opinion, um, it'll be um, easier to, to make it fit in that context um, with the intonation. So in these next um, difficult passages called the arpeggios, I find it really helpful to bring out a single voice, um, emphasize specific notes um, that you can go for. So for example, um, I'm, I'm just thinking about making those notes very important. It, it gives a sense of musicality, and not, so it's not just a robotic stream of 16th notes. And it kind of helps, um, it gives me some, some, like anchor, some points to feel anchored um, with my string crossings. I think it helps both technically and musically. For these passages with lots of shifts in them, um, just constantly right in a row, um, practice them isolated from each other. So for example, you know, and then you can, um, you can decrease the gaps that you've put in between those shifts. Um, and it'll make those kind of daunting passages more manageable, hopefully. You'll want to do a similar technique um, practicing the shifts in this next passage with all of the descending scales when you keep having to leap up back to the, the top of the scale. So, for example... So, getting to that arrival point, stopping, and then shifting. Um, just to get that motion in your fingers in a easy, comfortable context, then you can speed it up. Um, and I do, I really recommend kind of emphasizing the, the tops of each scale. Um, you know, I, I did some little things there, but um, just, I almost put like a little accent um, not too much, obviously, because it's not written, but um, it just helps me kind of recontextualize where I am. Um, so this long um, kind of perpetual motion passage doesn't get too overwhelming. On this next page, um, after all of the crazy scales, we have this. string crossing so it sounds um, just kind of nice and full sound on each note and it, it should be um, it, it's it's a single fluid motion for all three instead of like robotic so hopefully that'll help um, just that gesture kind of sound better the voice leading idea um, just constantly keeps coming back um, so um, you can see before the that first B minor scale comes back um, this in the soul in this little soul G passage it's it's really even written in the music with a forte on each um, important note so it's just That's a very obvious case where you should bring out that line. Um, just remember, you can you can apply it even when it's it's not written with all the fortes.
for the three note chords near the end. Um, make sure um, you, you play kind of close to the fingerboard because if you're, if you're near the bridge, you can't grab all three strings at once. It's a lot harder um, just because of the angle. So, it's the other way. Yeah, and on that first one, I would probably recommend breaking it just because it's it's kind of awkward how it comes out. Um, you can't really. You um, you can try what's best, but then after that, I you know each down bow just it, it should feel pretty comfortable. Just try to get all three notes at once if you can. Um, and don't. So you are playing all three notes at once. Think of it um, like you you you're only attacking the beginning of all three notes. So you're not necessarily sustaining all three um, because then it would sound. Uh, Um, so you are attacking all three, but then um, you should let up the bottom note um, as you pull through the chord. So, so it's kind of like a cross between um, a, a three-note chord, but also but you're also sort of breaking it. Um, it's just that initial articulation. Um, it, I think it'll sound best if you can get all three. So thank you again for listening. I hope that my tips have helped a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, of course, ask in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. And yeah, um, make sure to watch the other etude video as well. Again, a lot of the same concepts between these two etudes. So good luck this summer with practicing this piece and just both very difficult etudes and with your audition in the fall.